Good evening YouTube. So as you can see, the black C6 is outside, which means there's work that needs to be done on the orange C6. Um, so as we talked earlier, I have issues with my fuel gauge bouncing, you know, going empty, bouncing full, and mostly being empty. So there's four methods I can try to try to get to, to fix this. The first method would be um, fixing it properly, which will require um, a new fuel sender unit for the passenger side which costs about 70 uh 60 bucks plus shipping be about 70 and probably some miscellaneous parts probably about another 10 or 15 so about 85 bucks there the second option is keep on trying to add tecron to the fuel to um you know get it to act right and it's been somewhat uh working that way um, adding Tecron every fill up, but it's just not consistent, and I hate to have to always keep going to buy Tecron for this issue. Third issue is to go get the actually tuned out by a tuner um, who's got you know EFA Live or HP tuners, and um, that will cost $200 to get it done here locally, or I can drive down to Corey in Henderson Performance. Um, he'll do it for free, but I have to spend the gas in a whole day, four hour drive one way, so eight hour drive round trip just to go take care of that now the last option is i found a post on the forum of um of a guy who basically um modified some resistors so that it sends a false signal that um the passenger tank is always empty so i got some resistors here from work and this cost about you know if i was to go to buy resistors by myself it cost about three dollars but since i work at a kind of electronic area of my job they just had resistors laying around so you have to, the the field center unit operates between uh, 200 uh, upper 240s to low 250s and ohms so what I'm gonna do is take the wheel off take off the inner um, wheel well which is this plastic piece right here and then get to the plug that goes into the center unit and then cut wires and splice in those resistors should take should not take me that long it should be pretty straightforward and what it will do is that my gas gauge will never read anything higher than half tank because on the c6 corvettes you have two you have two fuel tanks you have one on the left that is nine gallons and another one on the right which is nine gallons so um what the computer does is it takes both of those readings and averages the two to give you your fuel reading. So since this one's always going to read zero, the most you can ever have is half tank. And when the way the engine runs, it pulls from the passenger first, then the driver. So if this works, that'll be great because I fill the car up around quarter tank or below half. So, you know, I think this is going to be a great option just to run with. So let's go ahead and get started. Going to pop the wheel off. Then I'm going to jack it up and support it. Probably only need one jack stand and then get to work. All right, so we got the wheel off. Next thing is I'm going to remove the rear brake cooling duct with this seven millimeter. I think it is what it's supposed to be. Then after that, I'm going to um, pop these rivets. Well, I don't think they're even rivets. Uh, take these uh, nuts out right there. And I think there might be another one somewhere else and get this like inner, inner fender off right here. So, yeah, that'll be the next thing. Okay, got the little splash guard. Um pulled off with two rivets one was here and one was there next thing is i need to pull this harness out of the way that's not the harness i need to get apparently the one i need to get is behind it and it's held up together by like a red locking mechanism so let me go ahead and move this one off of its little bracket so that i can get some room and then go to the back so pull this off the clip and it took me a while to find it because i didn't almost see it but that's the one I need to uh, unclip and then splice the resistors too. So let me unclip the red part and pull it out. And apparently the wire harness is supposed to be long enough for me to be able to work on it out here. And uh, let's get going. Okay, so there it is. Got it pulled out. Uh, next thing is I'm going to get my resistors together and um, <clears throat> measure the ohms to make sure I pick the one closest to um, what's in range. I think it's like 246 to 2. Uh, 47. Here I'm looking at the guy's post here. I really think you know Corvette form is just awesome for this stuff. Um, so 253 is the max. Um, and I forget where it's somewhere in there it tells you, but it's like 247 to 253. But anyway, yeah, let's get going. 
So what I hear, got here is two of my resistors. One of them is 220, the other one's about 30. Average about, about 250, 251, uh, give or take a few. Um, I also have a bunch of different ones. So, you know, I got 220 in that pile. And then I got a different pile over there and another pile over there. So there's like the real small ones. Um, they have the same, if you can focus, they have the same amount of resistance as the big ones. But I'm going to go with the big ones because I have, I'm getting better numbers with those. Um, just because of the ones I picked up. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take these two, I'm going to solder them together, and then I'm going to measure the resistance one more time. Okay, I got them two soldered together. Not a beautiful job, but they are stuck together. I measured the resistance and it's 290, uh, 249 ohms. So next thing is I'm going to splice into the two wires here and uh, get it hooked up and that should be it. All right, so I'm gonna cut into my light blue wire and the black one. Uh, the black and white one is the ground, so I'm gonna cut into the black one, which is supposed to be the low reference wire, and then the uh, signal one is the blue one, so those ones I'm supposed to cut into. Okay, I got it all hooked up. Gonna put some electrical tape on there, tuck it back in, and start and see what happens. All right, sorry that it's so dark, but uh, got everything hooked back up. Check the signal uh, by running a car and it's showing a little bit above half tank. I cleared the code. So after driving around to work, towards work tomorrow, if I have no code errors and nothing pops up, then that means it works. So we'll see you tomorrow.